Hey, what's up guys? I'm Bright Torn and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 Wards and Wardens. So sorry we didn't have a video on Tuesday. Fortunately something came up and I wasn't able to record on Monday. And so I'm recording this video here on Tuesday afternoon and I'll just try and put it out as soon as it's done uploading. So it might be coming out on Tuesday night really late, but it's still essentially Wednesday's video. I just want to get it to you guys as soon as I can. So in today's episode we should become a king because we can form the kingdom of Lotharingia. So in order to form this kingdom, you gotta have 425 gold, which we almost have, should have that soon. And then you also need to have 14 counties within the kingdom, and we have 14, exactly. Uh, Cause you gotta have 50% and there's 27. So basically you got 14, you got enough, and we have exactly that. So I don't think we had this before, uh, but that, that territory we had gotten in that last war uh, was not in this area, I don't think. so. We could have formed it uh, with our previous character. I actually reloaded one of those saves to see, and yeah, our father could have formed this kingdom. And so this is something we could have done quite some time ago. So yeah, we'll just raise up the gold, and that's what we're gonna be doing. Uh, also, I want to go ahead and change up our character here, his look, because I do not like this mustache. It just, uh, I don't know, just doesn't look right. And so we're gonna change up his facial hair. It doesn't have to be a beard. It can be a mustache if that's what he likes. I mean, clearly he likes having a mustache. It just should be a different mustache. I just don't like that one. I don't know if there are any good mustaches. I know in real life I'm not a I'm not a mustache guy. I had to have a mustache when I was in the army and when I worked in corrections, and there's just none that I really like here. I, I guess it's just because I don't like mustaches. I think we will go ahead and give him a beard. Maybe something short. It doesn't have to be anything really long. Yeah, maybe just a, a Frankish nobleman's beard. That would work. And yeah, like a, a short beard. You can also go with like a goatee. It's kind of like a good blend between a mustache. Yeah, we'll go with the short goatee. It's a good blend between a mustache and a beard. Or maybe even this one here. Or it doesn't connect. Uh, maybe it looks more like him. It's better than the mustache though. Uh, so let's apply our changes here. I, mean, I had to wear a mustache in the army and in correction since you can't have a beard. I guess I didn't have to. But uh, I, I don't like not having any facial hair. My wife has never seen my upper lip before. She always jokes about that. We've been married 16 years and she's never seen my upper lip. So since we just got a romance event, a lady's honor. My God, Duchess Ida is an insufferable wench. Have you seen how she looks uncertain? Ridiculous. My cousin Count Albert throws his head back with a wicked laugh. Ida is still conversing with her friends, but I can tell she hurt him. I hate to see her hurt. So because they vile lies, draw your sword, fool. <laughs> this is a prowess challenge. Uh, or we can demand that he apologize to her. Okay, well remember, we're honest and trusting and brave. Uh, so we're, we're definitely going to stand up for her, though it looks like there's no choice to not stand up for her. Well, yeah, I guess you could just say this, but yeah, we wouldn't do that. I think we'd either force him to apologize or challenge him to duel. I feel like we should challenge him to duel. And this will not result in the, the duel events. It's just a 63% chance that we'll win and get 150 prestige. And then uh, get that act of heroism increasing our chance of success, which is already really high here. But there's a 36% chance that we're going to be defeated. His prowess is way lower than ours, so I'm actually surprised that he has such a high chance of winning here. And yeah, we'll get wounded and lose prestige, but Duchess Ida will pity us. Well, that's sad. But yeah, that's what we're gonna go with her, guys. Let's just see what happens here. So Count Albert draws his sword with a cocky grin. Oh, how I will enjoy wiping that arrogant look off his face. When I'm done with him, Count Albert's humiliation is absolute. Rused and blushing, he croaks out an apology and, and limps away to lick his wounds. Duchess Ida, on the other hand, is glowing like the sun. You are a true hero, Duke Gerard. You have my eternal gratitude. So somebody would mention that I was mispronouncing this, uh, that it should be Gerhard. And, and maybe in German it is, uh, but I know these characters, not necessarily this one, but his father, uh, by his English, the, the English version of his name, which is Gerard. And so that's the reason why I've been pronouncing it that. But yeah, in German this might be Gerhard. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, we'll call it, keep on pronouncing it Gerard. Uh, so yeah, we're going to gain some prestige here and get that axe of uh, heroism. Of course, we didn't need that bonus since we were already very likely to succeed with a 100% chance. 
Uh, so, yeah, it looks like this character was not yet on the council. And now we're going to get the position we want, what we wanted for our father, the position of marshal. Uh, so, yeah, just taking a look at the Legion's council here. And, yeah, he has that open right now. Remember, our father was a spy master, which he wasn't great at. Uh, but, yeah, you do get those those bonuses for being a spy master. But here, this will allow us to go through our education quicker. And so we're very, very nice. Also increasing the prowess further. So now we're at 28. Pretty damn good. The army gold maintenance is probably the best bonus that you get here. Because yeah, you're going to save all that money. Increase levy size. And then, yeah, the 20% experience is always great. So, yeah, we are actually the marshal of the Holy Roman Empire now. Our, our marshal skill is, is not as good as our prowess, but not bad at all. Pretty decent. And we are such a powerful uh, vassal, so it makes sense he'd put us in that position. Yeah, I've never really liked the mustache. I kept a goatee for most of my adult life when I was allowed to have facial hair, which was not much of my adult life. And then uh, when I moved to Colorado, I started growing a beard, and I just kept letting it longer and longer. Now I just keep the, the beard. I've had that for many years. Uh, so we got another romance event, Intruder. Uh, this is one we've seen quite a bit, so I won't read through it. You get it all the time. Uh, basically, somebody's breaking into your, your love's uh, room. So if you want to continue the romance, this is the only option you can go with. So you can just call the guards, or go with this option. But yeah, we're going to go with this one. And we'll see how it goes, because this can go many different ways here. And it looks like... Okay, this is an interesting one. She did not stab him, which you, you'll frequently see that one. But I think it's based off of their traits and stuff. So I will read this this particular uh, you know event. The sounds from the struggle above is the greatest motivator I have ever known. Without care for life or limb, I hoist myself through Duchess Ida's window. I feel as if I plunged into a frozen lake. Ida's on the floor, the intruder pushing her down, a gleaming, a gleaming blade between them. With a roar, I grab the villain by the collar and throw him into the wall. The rest is a blur. When the danger is over, I turn towards her. Ida, are you all right? I ask cautiously. As if my words were a spell, she finally unfreezes and throws herself into my arms. Thank God you are here, Gerard. Because, yeah, the, the one we most frequently see is that she saves herself. We crawl up there for nothing. Because, yeah, she ends up stabbing him. Uh, but, yeah, if we go with this option, I will never let you go uh, get into harm's way again. She becomes our soulmate. We also lay with her. Or we can just share a kiss with her, which we're not going to do. We're going to go with this one. And thus the romance is over and we have a soulmate. And also, Marshall impressed one of our vassals. And we finished up our, our romance there. And so we got our personal scheme open again. Let's maybe improve opinion with somebody. Uh, you know, our spy master really likes us. He's our uh, you know guy that we... I was going to say he's our friend, but we're not friends yet. Maybe we'll we'll change that situation. But yeah, we just gave him uh, some, some territory. And so yeah, he likes us because of that. And then our marshal doesn't like us much. We should probably focus on the Prince Bishop, though, because it looks like his opinion has decreased some from where it was at before. So we'll sway him 87% chance of success. And it looks like we have the, the gold as well. So let's go ahead and form this kingdom. I'm really surprised they don't tell you that here. Oh, well, I guess they have it here. It should, like, I don't know, when it's a higher title than what you have, I feel like it should be its own uh, little tab here or maybe even an alert because that's kind of a big deal it's not like just getting another duchy but yeah we could have got a third duchy as a duke we don't get that penalty but i had expected we would be getting a kingdom uh fairly early in the campaign and so that's the reason why i was treating it as if we were already a king and thus didn't want that third duchy title just yet so yeah let's go ahead and, and get the kingdom formed here we could just click that button to do it a little easier i suppose uh, yeah, that's going to get us that foreigner prestige and uh, spend all of our money. But we now have a royal court. We are a mighty king. And we can do this despite being a vassal because, of course, our liege is an emperor. And so you can have kings uh, underneath the, the emperor. And so now we are the second king in the Holy Roman Empire with the kingdom of Bohemia being the only other one in here. Historically, the Kingdom of Bohemia would be the only kingdom within the Holy Roman Empire for most of its history, for almost the entirety of its history. Uh, the Kingdom of Prussia would be formed, sort of. Uh, instead, it would be he would be called the king in Prussia, 
rather than the king of Prussia. And that would last for quite some time, but then eventually he would become the king of Prussia, and that would be the second kingdom uh, that would be formed. That was towards the end of the HRE's you know, life. It was in the 18th century. But for most of the history of the HRE, it was only the kingdom of Bohemia. That was the only kingdom within uh, the empire. But now we just formed the second kingdom very early in the HRE's life, when you, when you think about it, since it would last for hundreds of more years historically. Uh, so yeah, we got a, a court now, and I think this is just your normal event that you get here when you first form one. And so yeah, let them see their new king. We're going to go ahead and enter the court. You see what this looks like, since it is always different based on your culture. And I don't think we have a court that looks quite like this, actually. Yeah, this is a, a unique one compared to our other uh, campaigns as a king. And so we already start out with some court artifacts that we we'll want to go ahead and, and place. So we have the house banner and the dynasty banner. And we'll put both of these in place, but let's put the dynasty banner behind us since that one is better. So I put that one there. And then we'll put this one over here. So just place those, getting that prestige, the renown, and those other bonuses there. Yeah, we need more car core artifacts because this is pretty barren at this point. Uh, we also need to take a look at our court grandeur, the 35th court in the world, but it is decreasing because we're not spending much currently. So we actually need to, to step this up a little bit. I don't want to spend too much because we don't earn that much. So we're probably just going to go up to the second level for all of these. And you can see you're not getting any bonuses with the first level. This is an increase of prestige. Of course, you're always going to get the court ranger. And it's going to help your courtiers and guests get prestige as well. Going up to the second level for the lodgings. Get those bonuses. Then the land food. Moving up to modest food. And then from very few servants to few servants. And that helps with our personal schemes. But also the courtiers and guests will have more personal scheme power and hostile scheme resistance. So that's something to consider as well. Basically, they can act as uh, as agents better against you. Uh, so this would... Let's go and apply that. And this will step it up. So each level's getting us different bonuses here. Let's kind of hover over these so you can see them. That unlocks the Manage Royal Guards Counselor task. And so we need to get up to... Yeah, we should be able to get it up to level 5 eventually as we put some new artifacts over here. Level 4 will reduce our tyranny gain. But level 4, or excuse me, level 5 is how they get that uh, special trait based on your court type. Uh, our two choices, and, and you know these are based on your, your culture, the ethos of your culture here. And so we have two choices, diplomatic or scholarly. With the Diplomatic Court, what's nice about this one is you get one of its best bonuses here at level 1. The increased offer of vassalage acceptance scale by grandeur. So that's really nice to have. Makes it easier to get uh, vassals diplomatically. Tyranny gain is helpful if you get tyranny. Counselor opinion, obviously not a huge big there, a big deal there, but uh, helps a little bit. Uh, but then you get the max personal schemes plus 1. And that's really nice, but that's at level 10, so pretty far away. Uh, with the Scholarly Courts, level 1 here is... Is all right. Inspire characters arriving at court more frequently. That's nice, but it's not as good of a bonus as level one here. Uh, this is also not a big deal. Courtier and guest opinion plus 15, not very helpful. And so you don't really get a good bonus until level seven. So basically you got to get much, much further along to get the good bonuses here for the scholarly court with the monthly lifestyle experience points. And then, you know, that's 10%. So that's nice. And then at level 10, you get the learning per level of fame. That's nice as well. Uh, but then also it's going to control which uh, trait your courtiers get once they've been in your court for long enough if you're at level five in this case they get the learning well, in this case they get the diplomacy so i think we're gonna go with diplomatic just because you get the the better bonuses early on for this one while the, the scholarly one you don't get until you get to the higher levels their best bonuses are at the higher levels so yeah we'll just stay at the the diplomatic uh, we're gonna keep high german as the court language as well and since it's our first time in court i do like to to hold court we won't do this every uh five years as you can because for the most part, these events are, uh, yeah, they're just not all that helpful. Some of them are, are nice, uh, but for the most part, it just seems to kind of waste a lot of time going through all these, and they don't give you huge bonuses. They're nice flavor. I do them when I'm playing off camera. 
yeah, it just takes too long to go through all of them uh, while we're doing the Let's Play. Uh, so we've got uh, a monument restoration. A peasant woman stands before me, informing the court of her plea. The recent war took a toll on the countryside, and we're not sure who the culprit was, but they looted an important cultural site to us French from Lure. Uh, please, we beseech you, spare some of your resources so we can see it restored. The peasant ends her request with a clumsy bow, a clear indicator of their lowborn status. So we can give her the money, and that will increase cultural acceptance for the French. And uh, that'd be helpful because we do have a couple French provinces. But uh, we don't have 85 gold, so we're going to go in the negative doing this. Uh, we could instead say use, use the remaining materials for other buildings. We'll get the reduced building cost. But the cultural acceptance will actually decrease here, so that's not good. Uh, or we can say we cannot afford to spend the gold on this manor. And then we'll get the displeased, uh, displeased peasants modifier. Yeah, we'll go in the negative. Why not? Because uh, yeah, I don't. I think this character would would do so. And so yeah, let's go ahead and use the necessary funds. Go in the negative. And then the next event is a convenient offer. So this event is concerning this holding here in our capital, Psalm, and it's one of the better ones that you can get. It's uh, one of the reasons to sometimes hold court. As you can get some of these pretty nice ones but basically Harold our knight here uh, he's willing to pay to turn that into a castle a barony if we're willing to give it to him which of course we're not using it for anything right now and it's really nice because you get the money for it uh, so this would be 250 gold and in addition to that which does he even have 250 he does I guess it probably checks to make sure that they have money unless it gives them the money before the event starts I'm not sure how it works within the code because I don't know how he got all that money Maybe one of our tournament or something. But anyways, he gives you that money, and you get a castle holding there, which means he's going to be your vassal. Now, I was planning on building that myself, because we can now have another holding. But honestly, it's always better to just have another county over using your holding for a barony. And so, yeah, he's going to build it for us. And so we would have to pay the money to build it. Uh, but not only are we not paying the money to build it, but he's going to pay us. So yeah, it's a pretty good deal here. And we should probably get like a full county instead of a, a barony. So yeah, that's a, a really good uh, really good event there. Glad we got that one. Uh, and then we got Dress Me, Dress Me. So before the court is underway, my chancellor pulls me aside. To my surprise, he's brandishing a garish scarf. My lord, there will be so many attending your court. I know you are somewhat challenged in remembering every face and from whence it hails. I propose a solution. We require that all the court wear a dress which includes local style recognizable to all. He foisted a cap at me. For those without clear regional fashions, I've taken the liberty of hiring a tailor who can suggest some new traditional garb for them to wear. And so because I never forget a face, I shall be fine. This is a diplomacy challenge. 63% chance we'll succeed and thus get 300 diplomacy lifestyle experience points, which will get us pretty close to getting a diplomacy perk. We'll also get six court ranger. What? There's a 36% chance that we'll fail and we'll confuse the guests upon their arrival. You say, I'm certain my guests will wear such raiment proudly. Another diplomacy challenge. 53% chance of success. And uh, all vassals will get that diplomacy point. Or they'll lose one. Just based on if we succeed or not. Or you say, forget my guests. Have the tailor design me an exquisite outfit. Yeah, I don't think we'd go for that one. Despite the fact that it would be nice to get ourselves uh, you know, something to wear here. I think we're just going to go with this one. I never forget a face. I shall be fine. I don't think our character is the type that forgets faces. I think he like remembers everybody as a, a really good leader, a very diplomatic leader. That's a good way to, to kind of raise your men's morale and trust in you is if you can remember all their names. Just remember some random soldier's name and what he did in a, in a battle. And so yeah, I think we're going to go with this one with the, with the expectation that this is not a lie. We're being honest here. And uh, we'll see if we succeed. We did. And actually, that was enough to get a diplomacy perk. I thought we had only had... Yeah, I thought we didn't have enough there, but clearly we do. So even though that's not our lifestyle, we can get a diplomacy perk. And so, yeah, we'll go ahead and see which one's most beneficial with the assumption that we won't be able to get any more. Now, if he lives long enough, maybe we'll switch over to the diplomacy one. I feel like you got to get a couple of these martial perks, at least two of these, before you switch over. 
to anything else. It's really not beneficial to switch over when it comes to like the experience gain. But again, this character is kind of both martial and diplomacy minded. But for now, we'll just assume that we're not going to go down any of these branches and just pick the one that gives us the best bonus. So Thoughtful is opinion game from Sent Gifts. I don't really give gifts all that often. Uh, the Sway Scheme Power plus 30%, that's nice to have. Monthly Prestige for Dread. Hopefully it won't gain much Dread, being a very Arthurian Knight here. We could instead unlock the Befriend Scheme, so a scheme to make friends, and uh, the Challenge to Board Game, Interaction, or Groom to Rule, Children Receive 1-3 to three Extra Skill Points. Hmm. Well, considering we're a new king, I feel like Groom to Rule makes a lot of sense and boosting up our children. Yeah, let, let's do that. We got a, already got like three sons. And so yeah, it would help to, to boost to boost them all. So Gerard, our eldest, just boosted his martial skill. All right, that's interesting. Remember, we decided to have him go down the intrigue. So yeah, he might actually be pretty decent at martial. Well, look at that. His stewardship is... Decent as well. Well, his intrigue, which is what he's set to do, is, is the worst here. Uh, and then Otto, because he's got his uh, pensive trait, he got the learning. Because uh, this is based on their, their childhood trait. So he got the rowdy, so that's why he got the martial. And the uh, the pensive gets you the learning. So he got the one plus learning here. And so we can go ahead and pick his uh, education here. Maybe Otto should be the one we send to the church. Have him do the learning education. And that makes a lot of sense. So yeah, let's go and do that. The second son will be uh, the one we hope goes to the church. And then Prince Magnus didn't get anything because he hasn't got his uh, childhood trait just yet. So we got to wait for that. Uh, we can create a new accolade since we're a king. We'll be able to get more knights as well. And let me just see how long this is going to take to deteriorate because we probably should like destroy these because you get that money for destroying them. So yeah, if we're not going to reforge or repair them, then we should make sure we do that before it actually expires. We should have done that with that last object that we had. Somebody brought that up in the comments. If you guys recall last uh, series, I learned about that mechanic because I didn't know you could earn money that way. And we were earning tons of money from breaking down our objects. All right, so he continues to get worse and worse because obviously he just gets older and he's, he's one-legged. Uh, but uh, he doesn't retire the position. Just gotta wait for him to die. We already have a successor for him, and he's pretty good. And he's a young man, fairly young man. And so yeah, we can open up another accolade position here, which I almost want to put. Well, he would not be able to do it because he's a count. I was gonna say put him in there, but yeah, we need them to be like a, a baron or a lower. We got this knight here. He's the the next best knight. So if you want to give him the accolade, you can always see what his options are. Oh wow, he's got the archer one. I don't think I've ever seen that one. Max size of archer regiments, and then your archers are just better in general. Hmm, interesting. I don't know if it's worth getting an accolade just for that. But yeah, it's interesting just that I hadn't seen it before. You got a skirmish one. I mean, his are not as, as good at options. You got the, the marauder, which doesn't really fit our, our character here. Uh, this here increases your army toughness eventually, but initially it's just going to increase your travel safety, which generally isn't much of an issue here. So just not a lot of great choices for this character, despite him being the the better one as far as his prowess goes. But yeah, I'm not excited about any of these. So maybe let's take a look at the next best. Well, you have our new Baron. As long as he's a baron, he can he can do it. So let's see what options he has. So he could do the charmer. Seduction scheme power. Of course, we're not doing any seduction with this character. So yeah, I don't know if that would be the way to go. But it seems like he doesn't have anything else uh, open to him here. Unfortunately. Isn't the other one called Iron Knight? Yeah, he's called Iron Knight. And it's going to open up a new one called the Iron Knight. Okay. So yeah, no choices here. He only has the, the Charmer and Thug. So he's a Charming Thug. So probably don't want to go with him. So this is the next best one. He has the Tactician, which we did not get with our, our uh, Iron Knight. You know, he has the uh, the Besieger and the Valiant. 
could go with that one because that was the one that we were considering getting. And then the Marauder is what he currently has for the secondary. But you could change it to Fanatic. Or, yeah, the Stalwart, which, you know, it's secondary, so it's not as important. So I think we'll, we'll probably go with the, yeah, we'll probably go with the Stalwart one. Though, you know, this one's helpful for the uncontrolled territory attacker advantage. That's nice to have as well. But yeah, we'll probably just go with, with this one here to eventually get the army toughness. So let's change that up. So we need a name for this accolade, or we can keep it first among advisors. I don't think that's the best name for a knightly position, but yeah, I'd prefer to change that, unless you guys really like that one. Now we do need a successor for this position, so let's see if we can't find one. We'll seek one out. And so now we have the two accolade positions. And maybe this will get us another knight as well. And our court ranger has increased up to level four, and our wife did get pregnant. So she probably got pregnant with that event where we saved her. And unfortunately we lost our friend, that count. So we got some stress from that. We also got a martial perk. Right, excellent. So we're going down the courtship line now. So we're going to work on that. And because we're now a king, he's going to offer us all those vassals, including Duke Gottfried. The hideous is what he's known as. I mean, he doesn't look like a hideous guy to me. Is this all just because he's got the, the hunchback? That seems kind of messed up. Just because you got a hunchback doesn't mean that you're hideous. Because, yeah, the rest of them seems fine. I mean, yeah, I don't know. But anyways, so he's offering us, you know, him as a vassal, and that brings all this territory here, uh, which is nice. But it does mean that we have a fairly powerful duke underneath us. One who we don't really like either. But maybe he'll be uh, disloyal and we can take some of that territory from him. And then we also got this count over here. Since these are all our rightful vassals now. And thus we have increased the size of our territory as the king of Lotharingia. Alright, so doing pretty good now, guys. And he took this position from us already. Wow. All right. So he gave us those titles and then took our position in the council. He replaces already with this cruddy knight. I'm guessing this guy. Okay. So I think what happened is that this guy probably had uh, a hook on the emperor because there's no way that he's definitely not a powerful vassal. He has one county and he's terrible. So basically he demanded that he be made the marshal. So... I'm not going to blame the Emperor, this is not his fault, it's politics, guys. And somebody just created an independence faction against the Emperor. This Duke here of Provence. So, a fairly powerful Duke. Not one of the most powerful, but yeah. An independence faction has been created. Okay. I don't think we're the type to try and rebel. So our first daughter was born, and we're going to name her after our mother, Hedwig. So we've got some money, and I think what we're going to do is save up for university visits to upgrade our education, try and get up to level 4. We haven't done that either, and it's one of the new things. Uh, we also got this constructed. Right, excellent. But yeah, it's one of the new things in the expansion, so it's something I'd like to, to try out. We can also declare some wars here. So you can attempt to take his territory from him uh, up here, since they are rightfully ours. So yeah, we could take some of this territory from This would cost us some piety, since it's a theocracy that we're taking territory from. Uh, so something to consider. I still think we probably would do it if we see it as rightfully ours. So maybe that'll be the, the war that we do. Of course, wars cost money, so I think we might want to do the university visit first, because I really want to do that. I'm not sure how expensive they are. Uh, looking at the... Let me get trained for a tournament here. Yeah, maybe we'll we'll do that here in a minute. Our court position has gotten some experience there. Uh, but yeah, looking at the activities, it's saying that it's 480, so it seems to be a, a fairly expensive one, like up along the levels of a, a grand activity. Far more expensive than a feast hunt or even a pilgrimage. And so yeah, I think uh, 
it's something we're going to want to save up a bit more for. I guess we can look to see exactly how much we need to save up. Well, there is a, a Prince Bishop doing a hunt up here. Take us two months to get to, so it wouldn't take too long. Might be able to lose some of the stress here. Yeah, I suppose we'll attend that. But let me first get the university visit uh, looked at, just to see how expensive this would be. Because I think it might depend on which university you go to. And so you'd probably want to go to the closest one here in Canterbury. Yeah, I don't think we want to go that far. So if we were to attend this university here, and then you have a couple different options to study hard, or you're just trying to enjoy yourself, which we'd be going to, to study hard here. And you can see it's 445 at the very least, and it's based on the, the study materials. So you can decrease the amount that you're spending, but you're less likely to be successful. So this gives you a random skill point. Well, this one increases the success by a lot, but you also get a, an illustrious book artifact. That'd be nice, but quite a bit more expensive. So might just want to save up for the 445, just because, yeah, this would be 600. So basically 445 is what we need to save up here. I wanted to take a, take a look at that so we know what we need to save up for. But yeah, it was pretty accurate telling us here on the activities what it would be. Pretty close to that. Um, so yeah, let's go and attend this here hunt. And we're going to be going through some forest here. That yeah, seems like a fairly safe route. There's a little bit of danger, but we don't shy away from just a little bit of danger. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and, and join the hunt. We'll travel on up there. And allow our wife to take over as regent, which she shouldn't be pretty loyal, you would think. Yeah, selfless being our soulmate. Also, we do have a person we can sponsor. I don't want to pay for the money right now, uh, but it seems that he would do really well at it because uh, he's considered a master by his peers. Uh, but he wants to go on an adventure to Southern Europe. All right, so just clicking through this real quick. We obviously don't want to do that as a brave character. He's not very good. I feel that he does deserve our help, though. So we're going to go with this option, and uh, now yeah, we'll be recruiting him. And, uh, we were mauled by the wolf. Okay, so we were wounded, but we lost it due to the successful treatment by our doctor. Uh, Magnus also got the, the rowdy, and so he got the martial point. So I think we're going to have him go with the, the martial education, because you know we had our eldest go with entry. Remember, we have ourselves as the guardian of Gerard. Uh, so we need to get guardian uh, guardian for Otto here. And so probably want to have somebody who has really good learning and also will have traits that uh, would fit for somebody going into the church. So I mean, just looking at the, the learning here, this character would be the best. But she doesn't have good traits here. Yeah, just really the patient. So you probably don't want to give our child to... I mean, there's really no good choices here. So we might have to find somebody abroad to send our child off to. Like maybe one of these prince bishops here. Uh, so he's got uh, decent learning and he's compassionate. Of course, that's not all that's going to control what traits he gets. Yeah, he's probably the best option because we're also trying to boost his opinion since he's our Prince Bishop. But would he accept? Let's just take a look here. So this is for Otto. He has ward positions open. But I didn't see him as one of the options there. Yeah, there's just nobody, uh, nobody to give it to. So yeah, he would not accept. That's the problem. For whatever reason, so we gotta find somebody else uh, that would be willing to accept. So I think I found a pretty good character here. He's in Provence. I just used the uh, the character finder to find him, and uh, yeah, he's a pretty good choice because he's zealous, and that gives you a nice bonus for getting him to go to into the church if you can get that. And he's also honest, which is a virtuous trait. Uh, so yeah, I think he's pretty good, and, and most importantly, look at that very high learning, very decent learning, and he's willing to accept. So that's important too. 
Uh, so yeah, we'll go ahead and send that proposal off. And now we just need to find somebody for our youngest son, Magnus, because I think we're currently doing, oh, you know what, we're not. So our brother, half-brother, I suppose, it's more correct. So he uh, is not our, under our control, is he? No, he's in Pomerania. Okay, I didn't realize that. So let's invite him into the court. I'd bring these two characters as well, our half-sister. And I'm assuming she's the one taking care of them. Yeah, their mother. And she's just wandering anyways. So yeah, let's then invite them to the court. And of course he did accept that. And we've also arrived at the hunt. So yeah, I didn't realize that our half-brother wasn't even in our court. Um, so yeah, we, we got him. He's bossy. Let's see. He looks like he's doing pretty good with the, the stewardship compared to the marshal. I think we might want to give him territory. See, you can make him a, a knight. So that'd be one way and, and have him do the martial education. Uh, but yeah, I think we're going to go with the steward education instead. He has a rightful claim to some territory. So when he gets old enough, we'll want to give him uh, some land. He's just off wandering over here. His mom just, oh, yeah, I feel bad. She's just been over here, like homeless. I mean, geez, we just failed to take care of our brother here. I thought he was in our court the whole time. I had no idea. And uh, also, there's our half-sisters here as well. Which, are they all underneath the, the same mom? Yeah, she's got the three kids. And so we got our half-sisters uh, that need to be taken care of, too. Well, it looks like she's already in Ireland. Okay. I see. Uh, but we did get uh, Candida. She's here. And she's doing the stewardship education as well, since she's bossy. See, so yeah, I guess we'll just keep them both on, on stewardship. That works fine. Uh, she will need a guardian, though. Uh, so will our half-brother. Uh, so let's go ahead and find one. We're not going to look too hard for these. In fact, let's, let's do our, our brother, William, first. Uh, which, of course, remember, he's named after William the Bastard. And so we're looking for somebody who has uh, a good stewardship rating. And that would be willing to accept. Uh, yeah. Our acclaimed knights. Older man here. His stewardship is not too bad. Why not? Yeah, let's give him uh, our brother uh, for training. In fact, we could give him both of the, the children. So that's what we'll do. If he's willing to accept, of course, which I don't know why he wouldn't be willing to. So yeah, clearly he's the, the best option. So we'll just have him train them both. And then that means they get to, to be together as well. All right, excellent. So we got those appointed. Uh, we still haven't found anybody for, for Magnus yet, and I guess we should train him since we're a martial minded guy. Uh, so that makes sense for us to, to train Magnus. There we go. Fantastic. So we got two of our children underneath us as guardians. And we have been re-invited to the council, but this time it's as steward because, of course, again, this is not his fault. He can't remove this guy. Uh, as Marshall. Oh, wait a minute. This is a different character. What happened to that count? <laughs> Did he just arrest him or something? Yeah, because he can't remove him from the position once he demands it. If that's, in fact, what happened, which I don't know why else he would be in that position. Yeah, I guess we'll take the steward position. It does have some bonuses. It won't help us with our education, but we get the increased taxes. So that's really nice. And also, building is cheaper. Uh, so yeah, we'll have more money. Not making good progress in this episode because, good God, cause so many things are happening. There's a lot going on at the moment. We're taking care of a lot of business as well. My son arrived safely over there. Uh, we did not sway the Prince Bishop. I thought we had a pretty good chance to do that. Oh, now it's much lower than it was. Okay. So that's unfortunate. Uh, I did not select what we're trying to do here. We could do recreation because yeah, this is... Uh, Another one of the bird hunts, so you can't uh, attempt to be successful, so that'll work. We'll try and burn off some of the stress. And unfortunately, the hunt was called off because he's fearful for his life due to rumors of an assassination attempt. So unfortunately, our son was just randomly, severely injured. Nothing uh, really saying what happened here, how he got severely injured. I never got any event about it or anything. 
But our physician wants to know how we should be treated. But yeah, it would be unfortunate if we lost another of our eldest sons. Uh, particularly because, you know, who would take over it would be Otto here, who's also wounded. Wow, what's going on with all our children? Yeah, he got wounded too. Not sure what happened there. But yeah, that would be the, uh, the learning route. So obviously he wouldn't go to the church. But if we did have him go to the church, uh, then uh, it would be Magnus. And we'd be back under a martial character. Alright, so what are we going to do here? I feel like we're trusting. So therefore we're going to trust that he does what's best. We can also leave it up to our son. I guess we'll leave it up to him. We'll trust that he knows at this age. I mean, he's not he's not very old. He's only seven, but uh, but then we have our our son Otto, who's also injured. I wonder if they got to fight with each other or something. Cause yeah, they're both severely injured. But aren't they like in completely different places? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure how that that happened. But anyways, we'll just trust his judgment, and we'll see what happens. Our wife is is pregnant again. I suppose that's good since we got two injured, severely injured children here. So let's have to see how this goes down. I wish we had gotten an event or something notifying us uh, how they got injured. That would have been nice. A sudden shock. I have ridden, taken aim, and struck so many times I thought nothing could upset my rhythm. As I take yet another gallop down the practice range, a commotion I cannot fully see makes my horse rear up. For an instant, momentum keeps me pinned to the back of the horse as it starts shaking. Then, as if time is flowing slow, I can feel myself becoming dislodged. So you say, calm down, boy. Calm down. This is a prowess challenge. And if we succeed, we get that 100 martial lifestyle experience points and the experienced rider. 27% chance we'll get wounded. Or I die for the stable ground. Better safe than sorry. I'm going to do that as a brave character. We're just going to go with this one. And we got the in charge event. I can feel myself being thrown left and right, but no motion can make me loosen my grasp on the reins and the saddle. My commands eventually soothe the horse, and the animal is soon back to stomping eagerly on the hard pack ground as stable as ever. And thus we did get the, the nice bonuses there. Right, excellent. And that gives us the martial lifestyle perk. So moving down this branch fairly fast, we'll get the promising prospects, which is great because we'll be arranging marriages for our children soon. Uh, so we have the money that we need to go to the university, guys. So let's go ahead and do that. It's now saying it's more expensive. Hmm, that's interesting. I wonder why. Shouldn't it be any more expensive. Huh. Yeah, I wonder why the cost went up by so much. I assume it had the kingdom tier before. But you see it is... Uh, Far more expensive now. Were we not a king when I looked at this? I could have swore we were. Maybe we weren't. Because, yeah, now it's way more expensive. All right, so we're not going yet then. Yeah, that's a real shame. So we'll have to wait. Earn even more money. And our child has returned. Okay, so were they all meeting somebody up here? Yeah, I never even got an event about that or anything. Still haven't swayed him, by the way. You continue to, to fail at that. Uh, there's a feast we can attend. It's four months away. Where's she at? Way up over here. Yeah, I don't think we're going to attend that feast right now, guys. Instead, we probably want to go to this tournament. Can we arrive in time? This is really far. That's all the way in Crimea. Never mind. Yeah, that'll take far too long. We're not going to attend a tournament that far away. And uh, there's a good chance we wouldn't be able to, to make it there anyways. And if this character dies, we'll lose a bit of territory here. We can't ask our head to pay for gold. All right, well, we should because it's, it's for a good reason. We want to go to the university. And then once this is done, this count over here was excommunicated. Uh, but yeah, now that we got this money, we can go to the university now. Uh, once we, we finish the university visit, uh, then we'll probably do a war. Because our martial minded character is ready to go to war again. Huh, the, the money seems to fluctuate so much. That's weird. I'm not entirely sure what controls that. But we could do the full library of knowledge now, since we have all that money, so why not? Yeah, let's go ahead and do so. 
Uh, this is a, a nice little uh, trip here at six months. Might be worth the money to try and speed it up some. Also, you have the, the typical dangers that you have when going across the sea. So you could reduce that some. But hiring mercenary guards is going to make this more expensive. It would save us some time. I'm trying to see how much. It doesn't look like it's going to change it all that much. It still says six months here. Yeah, it's really not speeding it up all that much. Okay, so yeah, we'll just uh, save our money. And this looks good. It's going to be 730. I don't see anything wrong with the route going across the channel to Dover. And so yeah, we'll, we'll try out this university visit, guys, and see how it goes. So we can't improve our education trait. And uh, looks like that one knight died and... Thus the accolade rank did lose its its ranking there, but didn't it, uh, we have two children, or excuse me, two of our, our half-siblings underneath him? Oh. He got to, uh, he, he's infirm now, and so he got to actually retire. That means he's not as good with the stewardship, but I think we're just going to leave him there. It, it is what it is, guys. They might still be good. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see how well they do at the education. Uh, so we did get another travel event here, a lowly delicacy, and we're just gonna say, uh, we're just gonna say this one. I don't think we're gonna eat this. It's a sixty percent chance it might do well. I mean, we are trusting, so I suppose you could argue we'd be trusting that it's tasty. Why not? It was disgusting. <laughs> of course it was. Of course it was. So. uh Got a little penalty there. So we have arrived. This gained us the 200 learning lifestyle experience points and also some piety for visiting it, the basilica there. And we got our first event here, if you guys want to read that. But this is how well we do. So we want to get at as high a score as possible. And you see what, what you get with each of these. This is just a low chance to improve it. Well, this is a very high chance to improve your education trade. Uh, but yeah, you see you get these these perks here. So no matter what, you'll get uh, some perks out of it, as long as you can get up to the, the second level. So yeah, time to get started. See how well we do at this education. Also, man, our wife is injured too. I'm sure she probably injured herself here. But yeah, we had another daughter. So this is our, our second daughter. And maybe just name her after her mother. So we'll have another Ida. And we have a university visit here event. Uh, it's a party of peasants. So I'm suddenly distracted from my midnight studies by a loud crash, an ear deafening slam, and an expensive sounding shatter. What in the world is going on? The sound of disturbances appears to be two peasants. God knows how they got in here, ravenously gulping down a barrel of the university's refined uh, hippocross. Uh, this this will hiccup teach them. One of them shouts. Yeah, they think they're better than us just because they can read the other follows. This guy's got some expensive looking glasses here. It's kind of strange. Uh, but yeah, we can say, poor unfortunate souls, I will see that you learn how to read. Okay. It would make your visit more successful. I will increase their learning by eight. Good God, that's a lot. I mean, their learning is currently at zero though, so. But yeah, that is an option. They'll join our court as well. Neither one of them's great as a knight, but he's got some very good uh, stewardship. I don't know what you'd use them for, though, if they're not going to be a knight. But yeah, they, they would join our court. It costs us 120 gold and 150 prestige. Would we do that? Honest, trusting, brave. I, I don't see any of those. Indicating that we would do that, or really probably any of these other events, or these uh, other options. We can say, I could use some servants to carry on my books. Makes it slightly more successful. They'll be thankful. Won't cost as much either. Or better tell the teachers before they destroy the place, and then they'll get imprisoned. And there's a 50% chance you're less successful. Hmm. Yeah, I, th I feel like that's kind of a, a cooler way to go about it. 
I almost feel like we should go with this one. You know, I just kind of feel like he's such a... He's a nice guy. And so you'd want to take him and then not just give him a job, but like teach him how to read on top of that. Yeah, I think we'll do that. It's going to cost us some money and prestige because obviously, you know, we're hanging out with these peasants here. Uh, but yeah, I think it's, it's going to be worth it. Uh, the guest speaker. Students, we have an esteemed speaker joining us today. My teacher... I have no idea how to pronounce this guy's name. Uh, he also has those glasses on here. It's not the same character, is it? Sure, it looks like the same character uh, as those peasants. He says, let us welcome him, uh, the utmost authority on Catholic doctrine in Canterbury. So that's the, the Bishop of Kent. Greetings, Adamar starts solemnly while taking in his surroundings. Today we'll be exploring theological treatises and how it connects, connects to the nature of God. The other students straighten their backs and procure their quills. This is going to take a while. All right, so we can say, what, that's heretical thought. A 0% chance we're gonna succeed here is a learning diplomacy challenge. 99% chance we'll be ushered out, wow. Uh, fiercely scribble notes. This is apparently very uh, stressful for us. I guess uh, university can be quite stressful, uh, but it does make it more successful uh, here. Or we could just say, oh, fascinating, yes, yes. 25% <laughs> chance we'll be successful there. Um, hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess we can just get stressed out doing this. I don't know. I remember we're a martial minded character, we are a tactician. Nothing really indicated that we'd do any of these options, honestly. And uh, frankly, I don't really want to hit our stress cap here right now because we don't know what that's going to result in just yet. So I think we're just going to do the, the fascinating one. Maybe maybe we get the 25% chance. Well, but unfortunately, we are going to have to end today's episode here. We won't be able to finish our activity. Yeah, we're gonna finish up that university, see how likely we are to be successful. I don't know how long it lasts. See, five months until it ends. So we still got plenty of time to increase our score here. We might not be able to get it to the highest level. Yeah, maybe we can get some perks out of it and still have a good chance of improving our education trait uh, up to the level four. Remember, you can now go up to level five, though I think you can only increase it one level. Uh, you know from the university so you'd have to already be at a level four to get to level five But yeah, they added in that that fifth level So for those level four characters, they still got a reason to go to the university. But yeah, so we got lots of, of new events here that we haven't seen before with this uh, university activity um, Unfortunately, we do have to end the episode here. I do want to take a look and see if our sons have healed he has not, and neither has he. They're still both severely injured. So we'll have to wait and see if they make it through. We couldn't end up losing both of them. And then we'll be Magnus, another martial character. Uh, the Hunchback uh, trait here as well. Yeah, we'll just have to see what happens. Uh, but he's our the last of our sons. So just a very interesting situation. I assume one of them at least would recover. We'll just have to wait and see. I hope you guys did enjoy today's episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Do hope to see you on the next one, and thanks for watching.